Welcome everybody, Chef Katie May here for another episode of Delicious Living. We are making an amazing dish today, holiday favorite. So I'm just uh, about to start the magic oven. I'm going to put a, a dish in and then I'm going to show you how to make it and we'll pull it out and you'll get to see the finished product. So let me know in the comments that you can hear me and see me. Obviously, how's everyone doing? Excited for for uh, the holidays. This is I personally am, um, and this dish is one of my holiday favorites um, that I'll be making for my family next week. So I hope you guys enjoy this. Um, one sec, let me put it in. Okay, so we have. The recipe, um, Meryl, if you could put the link to the automation, to uh, the featured recipe in the um, comments, that would be awesome. Welcome, hello everyone. Um, so great to see you all here. And let me actually, I'm going to give you, we had a glitch earlier with our email system. So I'm actually going to put our, our recipe right in the comments, just in case anyone couldn't, um, isn't on our list already. I don't want you to miss this one. And I know we had a, a glitch earlier today, so I'm just going to put it in the comments for you. Um, this is the recipe we're making today. Spinach artichoke dip, no dairy, no oil. Cashews are the base. Of course, you could do another nut like macadamia nuts, but they're much more expensive. Um, and you could try other nuts too, but that's definitely going to affect the flavor and the, um, the consistency. But if you um, are wanting to not do any fats at all, I wouldn't recommend this recipe. Um, it's just, it would be completely different. It'd be a little bit more like artichoke hummus if you use beans instead, which would still be, which should still be good, but it wouldn't be a spinach artichoke dip in the same way if you're not using any fat. Um, so just consider that. You can swap out the nuts for something like beans or even cauliflower, a steamed vegetable like potatoes or something, but it would be a completely different consistency. And I wouldn't call it, I wouldn't think of it the same way. You could call it the same thing, but I wouldn't think of it in the same way. Okay, so, um, that's awesome. Glad you got most of you see that you got the recipe. So we have, um, a pot. we're going to make it in a little, um, an oval dish like this, uh, probably six or seven by nine. Um, but the recipe is written for a pie pan. So you can put it in a big, um, round pie pan or a small pan or you could even try it out in smaller servings like in muffin tins if you, you if you would have to have the paper cup holders or silicon cup holders but you could do individual sizes um, that might be really great if you don't have many people around over the holidays so a um, couple options there right we're gonna start with our garlic and onion on the stove top here I have my garlic peeled, I'm just gonna dice it. I'm gonna grab a different knife. Yeah. So let me know in the comments if you guys have any questions. I'm curious which, um, if you've made any other artichoke dips, spinach dips that were plant-based or vegan. The difference mainly being vegan means no animal products, plant-based means whole foods. Whole plant foods, not processed. Although we should really specify that by saying whole, whole <laughs> food plant based, and especially without the added oil or salt here, it's going to be so tasty. So we want our garlic and onion cooked before we add it to our dip, so it doesn't have as much of a bite, a little bit more well-rounded flavor, a little more umami, and. I'm actually using um, 
white onion here, but you can use, or a yellow onion, you could use any type of onion. I go with a lighter of it, onion, white or yellow, because the red onion is gonna contribute some color to your dish that you'd rather not have. You wanna just keep it kind of simple, neutral, cream-based. That way the, the yellow from the artichoke and the nutritional yeast and then the green spinach all pops. Yeah, so we're gonna put in and in here too. Oops, aside. Now, our onion and our garlic, is, part of it is going to go into this blender and get totally blended, but not all of it is. So you want to make sure that you do chop it finely because you might have some of the onion unprocessed in your dip and you don't want to get a large piece of onion. Okay. One more half of garlic or onion. All right. Let me roll through here. In case I missed any questions. Um, oh, Susan, you had a plant based version that lacked flavor. So I hope you try this out and let me know. Come back and let me know. Um, if you're in one of our communities or if you're in uh, not in a community with us uh, we're kind of in transition with our communities so we had a membership portal and um, kind of leaving that to go to a different site and that we were previously on and then our recipes are our Facebook group as well um, point being I'd love to hear how you enjoy this so if you need to email me and let me know that would be Great. So I'm just going to pour our, transfer our onion and garlic into my pan here and we'll take it to the stove top. Yes. So this one has a lot of flavor. It definitely does. I'm going to put this all in. This here. on the stove tap we're just going to let the onion and garlic saute over medium heat and once that's you want to make sure you stir it because we don't want a brown color on our too much of the browning which is great flavor but we don't want that in our dish again because it would affect the color of the dish okay so we want to make sure that we stir it often the knife I'm using is a favorite of mine too it's Cuisinart ceramic knife Cuisinart Elements, and it is their eight inch um, chef's knife. So it is really nice. Ceramic knives are more delicate, so they can break easily. They can kind of chip, um, but I haven't had any issue with that. And ceramic knives are really sharp, so it's been great. Okay, now this is our first ingredient in the list is cultured cashew cheese. Um, cashew cream cheese you could say and this is not essential for you to make it um, I'm going to tell you it takes a couple steps you could just add blended cashews and water and make a cashew cream right that's very popular in the uh, plant-based world and it would give you great creaminess richness but it wouldn't give you a, a cheesiness um, the difference, one of the differences between just creamed up cashews and cheese is that the cheese has a lot of tang to it. It has the bacteria, that acid to it. It's almost a, got a sour taste. So, and depending on the cheese, they're all different, right? But we can actually ferment our cashews, ferment our nuts to develop more of that tanginess, that cultured uh, flavor. And so that's what I've done here and that's the recipe. It's on the second page of the recipe you were given, the PDF. If you go to the second page, you'll see there's cashews and I have them soaking here. So we'll actually make this, okay. Um, we're gonna blend her here. Oh, you know what? 
I've got to rinse out my blender. I was planning not to rinse it because I just have to blend this again. But I actually want to use these cashews. This cream that I'm going to be making, this cultured cream I'm going to be making, I'm going to use for another dish, not this one. So I'm going to rinse this out really quick. The dish I'm going to be using it for is a baked brie. So after the Thanksgiving holiday, if you're in the U.S., back on this show, we'll be making my baked brie, which is amazing, a vegan uh, cashew and coconut based brie. And it is just off the charts. So I'm going to be testing that out this weekend. So we don't want any of the garlic and onion in that brie, although savory brie would be good. It's going to be a sweet one, so I'm definitely going to rinse this out. Okay, so that'll be two weeks after Thanksgiving, we'll be back to do the baked brie. First Thursday after Thanksgiving. Okay, so I've got my cashews here and I'm going to strain these out. They've just been soaking only about an hour and a half. You can let them soak for longer. I don't soak my nuts for eight hours like some people do. I would say about four hours because they can start to get kind of a purpley blue color and that doesn't look good to me. It doesn't fit, sit right with me. So I soak my cashews between an hour and four hours. We're gonna add them all to the blender here. Now, the key ingredient is some sort of bacteria to ferment the cashews. We're, we could use Rejuvelac, which is something I used to buy and use. It's a probiotic drink made from grains, Rejuvelac. And I would buy it from the store, but you could only get um, one that's made from wheat in the store and where I was. And then I started making it from uh, quinoa so that it was gluten free. But it takes some extra steps. It takes some steps to make Rejuvelac homemade. And so, um, the easier option, and Rejuvelac doesn't last, so you make a whole bunch, um, it doesn't last. So the easier option is to use miso. So I'm gonna pull out my miso here. Um, this is a high salt item, but it gives us lots of umami, and we're just using a little bit, um, well, we're gonna use about a tablespoon, and it will, give us the bacteria to let the cashews ferment. Okay. Another option, if you don't have or don't want to use miso, you could do a, a yogurt starter, a vegan yogurt starter I would recommend, or a probiotic capsule. Any of those would work. Okay, you just need some sort of bacteria to get this going. Healthy, good bacteria. You want to make sure that everything is clean. Your containers are really clean that you're using to process it and then store it in so that you don't have any bad bacteria creating unwanted growth here. And then I'm going to add a little bit of water. So, oh, depends on how long your nuts soak for but you really want to use the minimal amount of water needed to fully blend and cream your, uh, your cashews, right, without breaking your blender. Okay. And the miso I'm using is a white miso, West Ray Natural. So the same company as the mustard I use, and it's a soybeans and rice, but you can actually get miso with different uh, types of beans used. Some even you can get without rice added if you needed one that didn't have the, a grain. Um, so just a light colored miso. If you do a dark colored miso, brown miso, it's going to be extra strong flavor so you don't need as much of it, okay? All right, now we're going to blend this up here. Make sure you have your tamper. We are put this guy in here. And we're gonna 
blend this behind me. It's going to be loud. You might want to silence your devices because it's going to take a few minutes. So do this. can see this a little bit closer here. This is our first round of the cream. You can see how gritty it is. Can you see that? Little pieces. We want this smooth, okay? So we have to blend it more, but if we were to fully blend it the first time, we'd probably blow a, a fuse on the blender. I've done that multiple times and I thought I broke the blender and it wasn't going to work again. It has come back to life <laughs> multiple times, but now I break it up to make sure that I don't overdo it. Okay, so we're going to blend again. Don't be afraid of your equipment and kind of getting your hands in there and just doing it because I've seen people use the blender to make things like this dish specifically and they're just kind of um, a little bit passive and very gentle, so loving and not wanting to, to break something or do it wrong. But this is one where it's going to get the best blending if you actually use that tamper um, push down the sides and help to to really blend it. Okay, make sure that it's got um, you know kind of really gotten all the different parts of your your mix here fully blended. Okay, and um, this is going to go into a glass container. Let me grab one out. So we want to use a glass container, no plastic, for storing and fermenting your nuts, okay? Let me switch containers. Ah, sorry about that. That container's talking to the wrong camera. So we have this batch over here. We're going to put all of this blended cashews with the miso and water. That's it. That was all it, it took. We're going to put it all in this container. Fabian, you made this cashew cream? Say it's the cultured cashew cream because it's got a tang to it. And what you're going to do is leave this cashew cream on the countertop. Do not put it in the fridge because the fridge will stop any growth from happening. What we want to do is grow that, let that good bacteria grow. And so we're gonna just put it in here. We'll put the lid on it and then we're going to let it sit on the countertop. And you can let it sit anywhere from, you know, four hours to two days, depending on how tangy you want it. And the the room temperature is going to affect the speed at which it cultures as well, okay? So if you're in a really warm room, it's going to culture faster than if it's 
in a cold, colder environment. And so if you only have a certain amount of time, you can actually warm up the environment for your cheese to be cultured a little bit faster. Uh, you could put it on over a dehydrator, maybe even in the dehydrator if you had a, um, if it could go to a low enough setting, or put it over the oven if the oven is on, you're making your, your sweet potatoes or um, cooking something in the oven, putting it over top, um, that would help it to stay warm and uh, culture more, okay? So we're just gonna kind of even it out here. Like I said, this is going to be for my baked brie with nuts and fruit. It's going to be so good. But this is the same thing that you would use for your let's put that there, for spinach artichoke dip. That's why I'm showing you. And for other things, if you wanted to make a sour cream, this is great. Okay, so we'll just put our lid on here and put this aside. Now what happens when you let this sit out is it starts to rise. So you can see a couple little air bubbles just because of how I layered it in there. But as it ferments, it's going to create more pockets and it will start to rise, okay? So this has only been sitting for maybe eight hours, if that. And so it's not um, fermented as much, but it does have great flavor still. So the longer you let it go, the more tanginess is going to develop. And then you're gonna get more of that tanginess in your um, spinach artichoke dip. And not just tang, but also umami. Umami, the savoriness, as the proteins break down through the fermentation process, you're creating more of the free glutamate, which will give you the umami taste, okay? Um, and if you're interested in learning more about that, definitely uh, check out my master class. Um, Meryl, if you could put a link to our Magic of Umami course, that would be great. Turn off my, my onions and garlic. are good to go. So this is the finished product for the cashew, cultured cashew cheese we're going to use. We're going to put it into our blender here. But before I do that, I'm going to actually start with the onion and mushroom. Okay. Um, the probiotic capsules, I haven't actually done that myself, so you'd have to, um, I would actually look up, get a specific probiotic capsule, you know, a specific strain, because there's so many different strains out there, so I would look that up. Um, you could search a probiotic capsule for making uh, cashew cheese or vegan cheese, probiotic capsule, something like that, because um, there's lots of different types of bacteria. You don't want to use the wrong one. Um, beans in place of the culture, that is going to give you something totally different than what we have here. It would actually give you something more like miso. Um, and I, there's probably a much uh, more complicated process than just what we've done here, blending the cashews with some bacteria to create the miso. But it's going to be very different because you don't have the fat of the cashew, so it's going to be a different consistency. Um, but experiment, it's always fun to experiment and see what happens. Um, let's see. Okay. So the um, onion and garlic, it's going to go in here. We're going to do half of the amount, right? Because we want to blend some of this onion and garlic all the way up, and then others we want to leave diced up so we have some chunkiness. Okay? So let's put this back here. And we're going to add in our other ingredients as well. So let's do a tablespoon of that here. apple cider vinegar. You could use rice vinegar too. And then oh, we're going to do some non-dairy milk. Actually, I'm going to shake this up. I'm using hemp milk, but a, an organic soy milk, even an almond milk would work.
great oat or rice milk, whatever you like. Let's double check my amount here. I think it's three fourths a cup. Yep. Okay. And then we have, I'm going to add, yep, that's it. We'll blend this first and then we'll add the rest of our ingredients, okay? So we'll put our, the salt soak your artichokes first or you can process them yourself you can steam them and do that whole thing but it, it's uh, quite the process to get art edible artichokes in this way so the canned one will work you just want to marinate your artichokes in water to leach out all of the salt well is a lot of the salt I guess okay so we have Strainer here, I'm gonna put my artichokes in, strain out that water. And then you can chop the artichoke by hand, or you could put it in your food process in your you could put it in a food processor too. This whole thing could be done in a food processor because you're not starting with whole nuts, you're starting with the cashew cream. So it can definitely be done in a food processor, okay? Um, and if you're going to put your cashews in here, you just put them in whole. These are artichoke hearts. Put them in whole, and then we can kind of do a gentle blending processing so that we don't want to cream the artichokes totally. You want some chunkiness. And we'll add in our nutritional yeast as well. And then I did switch the camera, right? Oh. Okay, you guys are on. Just... Fermented cauliflower. That sounds good too. Okay, so we're gonna do our nutritional yeast. Now this is one of the cheesy ingredients, okay? It's got lots of umami, lots of savoriness, lots of protein is what's giving it that umami flavor. And it's gonna make it so tasty. If you don't wanna use the nutritional yeast, you can use it out. It will um, not be as savory. This makes a big difference, but you can definitely leave it out. If you don't wanna do nutritional yeast and you wanna try to make a savory, vegetable dip like this, what I would recommend is to leave the nutritional yeast out, do a little more onion and some mushrooms. Saute with the onion and garlic some mushrooms and then blend that all together. Um, that would be really great, but you might want to, if you're going to blend any of the onion and garlic like I had just done, then leave the mushrooms, cook the mushrooms in a different pan. You don't want to blend your mushrooms, otherwise you'll have a brown colored dip um, which would still be tasty, but uh, presentation-wise, that would just add the mushrooms afterwards. And that was that's actually a fantastic idea that I'd love to try myself. Okay. So if you guys have any questions, make sure to um, capitalize. I know Meryl's probably told you, but put it in all caps because I feel like I'm missing something. Um, we're going to add in some no-salt seasoning. This is Benson's Table Tasty. That I don't use very much, but it is so good. It's dried herbs and spices that give you some uh, natural sodium and saltiness, along with a little bit of nutritional yeast, but it's mostly herbs and spices. And then we're going to add in some black pepper. 
I'm going to add the rest of it because I'm out of the stock that. Then we're going to add some freshly ground black pepper afterwards once we're putting it into the pan. And that's it. So let's blend this up. Oh, we're going to put the rest of our onion. I'm going to process this a little bit and then we'll put the rest of our onion and garlic in, okay? So we got to be careful not to overdo the artichokes. Make sure that you don't have any huge junk of artichoke and it looks fantastic. It smells so good. It smells so good. We're going to um, put this into a, a bowl here. Let's do this bowl here. And I gotta put my cheese in here still. But I'm just pouring some of it out. And we'll put our cream in. And then we're, we're going to mix it all together too. I just didn't want to overflow my blender, overfill it. Okay. I'll blend this one more time. Okay. Don't want to lose any of this dip on your tamper here. And actually, you know what is easier rather than just pour it right in there? If we get our greens in here, so I'm just using fresh spinach, but you can use frozen spinach as well. If you use the frozen, you want to make sure that you I would strain out any extra water. Um, there's too much water in it, but frozen will work. Okay, and I'm putting a whole, this actually isn't a whole pound. This is just 10 ounces, but there's so much here. Another option is to use fresh spinach and saute it. You could saute it on the stove top with the garlic and onion, and that would work as well, okay? Oh, I love this bowl too, and I just found this bowl at like World Market maybe, somewhere like that, but I'm really wanting a Holland bowl Holland bowls are nice big bowls like this, and you can get them much bigger than this one. So I would check those out, lots of different colors, but it's an investment. That's like a Christmas gift to yourself. <laughs> so frozen artichokes would work too. Again, you just want to thaw them first and then drain any extra water. So you can thaw them, Put them in a strainer, just like the spinach, and let any extra, you don't need to squeeze the water out of the spinach or artichoke, but certainly put it in a strainer so that the excess water can just kind of seep out if you let it sit there for some time. Okay. Yeah, and the frozen artichoke too, you can get without any salt added, so that's great. Now we just need our, the rest of the onion and artichoke we're going to add here. Or, sorry, onion and garlic. And we're going to mix it all up. So this is when I would add extra mushroom if you guys want. And even if you do use the nutritional yeast, the added mushroom would be so good. Take a big spoon or two spoons and kind of mix this 
the spinach raw does not um, <laughs> does not stir so well. It's like, but I think I'd rather have the spinach raw because you're going to cook it. You're going to put it in the oven, so this way you're not cooking the spinach twice, right? Oh my God, it smells so good though. I wish you guys were here. smell a vision You could try this. Uh, you Actually, if you are having family over or celebrating with people you live with, whatever you're doing, if you've got a lot of people, you might want to do this in two batches. This is so good. And you could make some of it like one batch at a time, mix it all at the same time, and then bake one batch at a time so that um, you have, you're not having colds leftovers. But it's so good. I'm just like, I'm making sure all my spinach is covered. Okay, that's what I'm doing. And now we just gotta put this in a pan. And then we're gonna pull out our already done. Yes, she is. Got some more onion in here, just take that out. Okay. So let me show you. Yes, the pans. Yeah, definitely less expensive at World Market, but it's not as big as the ones that the Holland um, Holland bowls offer. And yeah, I wish you were on your way. So um, I just saw something I wanted to answer. My pans, the pans I'm using right now is a Salad Master pan, um, but any any stainless steel pan would work great. And if you guys are interested in the Salad Master cookware and learning more about that, because the best way to get it, the way to get Salad Master cookware is to have dinner parties, um, which are plant-based and vegan, and they teach you nutrition. Um, they You can have a dinner party and have people over and then the person selling the Salad Master cookware will teach your friends about a vegan diet and the benefits of eating whole food plant-based, and then they'll teach them how to do the meal in the Salad Master cookware, and they'll talk about the benefits of the cookware as well. So I'm curious if you guys are interested in that, we could do you know, a class on that, a webinar, a free class, kind of like a, a virtual dinner party is what we would do. And you could actually get to test, you can be, get the instruction on how to test your cookware at home to see whether it is healthy cookware or not. Um, so look at this. Should give you a close up here. Let's give you a different view. Let's get all things out of here. Come in close here. So you see that a little better. We're going to top this off with a little extra seasoning and then it's going to go in the oven. We've got the oven set at 400 degrees. Convection oven would be 375. Just make sure it's all in there. So this wouldn't be as high if it, we had a bigger pie pan. <laughs> but, oh my gosh, this looks good. Okay. So like I said, we're going to top this with a little more seasoning. And a little more nutritional yeast. This really adds, adds to the flavor, of course, but we already put nutritional yeast in there. This is more about the coloring, having the, the color on top. Because it, you know, it doesn't brown up the same way that cheese browns if you are making a, a dairy spinach artichoke dip. So it's nice to have the nutritional yeast there. And then we'll add some freshly ground black pepper. And you know what? I just used um smoked paprika over my potato lox for lunch today and I think smoked paprika would be fantastic over this too. A little smoked paprika right on top here. 
I think I'm gonna try it. Let's get there. Loving this. So, if you um, if you guys are in the Delicious Living membership, I posted the replay to our Vidi Garden Fresh Healing cooking show yesterday, and that dish is fantastic. And if you're in the Magic of Umami class, um, you definitely want to watch that as well. I'll share that with you, all of the students and the Magic of Umami class because it's all about, uh, it's a different way to do our potato, waffle, avocado, carrot locks, what we did yesterday. So I want to share it with you. But this is going to be fantastic. Um, we're just going to cover it with foil. And actually, I, I prefer always to put parchment paper beneath the foil. That. A little bit. I'm gonna do that. Okay, I'm excited to pull out. It's probably really loud the foil. Uh, Jesse, yes, someone can. You can furnish without salt. I don't know about um, nuts yet. I don't know. But I know you can do vegetables without salt, and that's something I definitely want to get into. So next spring, you'll be seeing me, uh, maybe this summer, or maybe this winter, we'll do some fermentation. OK. Does my family come over every Thursday? Sometimes, not every Thursday. Sometimes I actually take it to them now too. Um, that's a great question, Diane. Yes, I would love to have a retreat. That would be so much fun, Ian. Okay. <gasps> Smells so good. This smells amazing. All right, I'll put this one in. Actually, I'm not going to put that in the oven because uh, then we'll have to have second. I mean, we'll have to reheat it because there's no way we can finish all of this. Um, but yes, I will be sharing this with my mom and father. So, you guys, how much fun would it be to do a weekend retreat next spring, next summer? Come out to the Northwest and uh, on top of cooking, we'll do some hiking and some yoga. It's so much fun. Should, you should message me if you're interested in that, just to get the ball rolling and start the conversation. Um, if you're in, if you would come out to the West Coast, email me and let me know that you're interested in that. Of course, there'd be a price cost for food and time and support, you know, all the help that would be needed. But I'd love to meet you guys face to face. So do you see this? Um, we have, it's got to cool a little bit. So that's good. I'm, as it cools, ooh, as it cools, I'm going to cut some vegetables here, okay? So what we're gonna do, put my lid back on my items here. Instead of bread, I've got some cucumber, some bell pepper, and even a broccoli. Head of broccoli, okay? So I'm gonna just chop these up and we'll put them on a little plate. dipping. So my cucumber I'm going to peel in strips on the outside so we don't have too thick of skin and then we're going to cut it in on the diagonal. Can you see me? Um, so I'm not cutting cross-sectionally 
We're cutting at an angle, okay? And you don't want the pieces too thin because they got to hold the dip. Oh, even that cucumber smells good. We'll put that around our plate. And then our bell pepper, we're going to cut around the side, around the seeds. I love the smell of fresh vegetables. This bell pepper was actually the smell and taste of a fresh organic red bell pepper is what got me to switch from being a doctor or being a naturopathic to being a nutritionist. Funny enough. So we're doing cutting big pieces of bell pepper so you, that you can hold it and dip it. No specific shape here. And then we're going to do our broccoli. And I actually I cut off the bottom of the stem because it's super fibrous, but I like the, the stem. So I'm going to cut the stem in thin pieces like we did the cucumber, and we can actually use this as well. And then we'll cut our florets into bigger pieces, um, medium pieces, okay? <laughs> um, I'm looking at your comments, see if I can answer anything here for you while I do this. Um, delicious. Yes, so instead of the instead of the bread, the vegetables, one, they give you so much more nutrition, but they also even out the density of the, the dip, right? It's so dense. If you were to dip your bread in there, um, you fill up too fast. And this, well, this will help you fill up without taking in too many calories because of all the fiber and the water and the vegetables, you know, give fill your belly with a lot of bulk, right? Because the dip is super dense. Okay, so now we'll put this all in our plate here. And my plate's a little small for everything I got. Do our peppers here. And let me wipe down my, my counter here, this little mess. Okay, you guys ready for this? We are going to Try it out. <laughs> um, I don't know what you guys are saying. I wish I had time to read through the comments in real time and engage more so. But, okay. So we have, I'll show you. Up close view. What should I do first? Okay, cucumber. Zip this. Yum. I'm still afraid it's too hot. Mm. Mm. <laughs> it is so good. Turn it around and double dip with the other side. <laughs> so you guys are going to love this. Um, I really, personally, um, I think I think connection is more healing. <laughs> and so I hope you are with someone this holiday season 
um, and not totally isolated. And you can enjoy this dish, some other dishes, with, um, with everyone. But if you are not with anyone else and you make this, I would actually make it in smaller batches because this is so much and it has the best flavor, like amazing flavor that you won't want to stop eating it when it's fresh out of the oven. But as it cools, it doesn't, um, like once it's cold, it doesn't have the same, um, you know, it doesn't have the same umami and gooeyness and everything. And so you'll want to reheat it later on. But spinach is so delicate that you don't really want to reheat this dish. So make smaller servings. Just put them in like a little, oh, I got the perfect pan. Let me show you. Something like this, a little, I know there's a name for this, I'm blanking on it, but something like this where you can have just a single serving. Even this is a big single serving, but this could kind of be a meal. Another thing I would do here, um, or you could do instead of the spinach, you can do kale or collards. Um, I do, half the time I make this, I make it with kale instead of the spinach. So that gives you a heartier green and I actually think, um, I think it would do a little bit better because the, like I said, the spinach is so delicate. So I hope you guys enjoy this. Um, the, com the recipe, if you wanna share the recipe again, uh, Meryl, that would be great. I might even have it still on my, yep, there we go. In case anyone didn't get this, this is the recipe. Um, I just put it in the comments. If you are not on our email list, um, definitely go to go to our homepage, theculinarygym.com, and you can um, hit the button for updates in the corner, and you'll get um, all the future notifications about our live class, along with all of the recipes. So thank you so much, guys, for joining. Um, I just see a question from Gina. Their serving size, well, I use two cups of cashews raw to make the cream cheese, and then we put all of the cream cheese in this. So you have two cups of cashews in this whole dish. Um, I would say four people could eat this dish easily without it being too heavy, especially if you're doing vegetables. Um, if you do bread, then it's you'll be able to eat it all, but it's gonna be too heavy feeling afterwards. So four people would be about a half a cup of cashews, which is a lot, um, you know, but this is an appetizer. This is the holiday season. This is not a typical, um, of course, it's not lunch or dinner, and it's not a, a typical meal that you would have daily or even weekly. This is a holiday dish, and so it comes out for Thanksgiving, Christmas, and New Year's sometimes, and then also my baked degree. Those are my, and the spice nuts. Those are my three really high, high nut dishes that I save for the holidays. So thank you guys so much for being here. I will see you next week. It is not going to be a Delicious Living Live episode. It will be Thanksgiving, and we have a Thanksgiving special with Chef AJ and Chef Bravo um, and a couple other chefs who will be preparing you a delicious whole food plant-based SOS-free meal. Um, super excited, and it's all going to be done in real time so that you can actually prepare it with us. So if you're not on Chef AJ's email list, I will be letting you know over at my email list. So if you're here, you're going to get notifications as long as you're on the list. And you can actually prepare all of the dishes with us on Thanksgiving Day because we'll, she'll send out, and if, if she gives it to me, somehow you'll get notified of the recipes and the ingredient list so you can do all the shopping ahead of time and you can join us for a great plant-based Thanksgiving meal. And then the week after that, I'll be making the baked brie with the same uh, cashew cream cheese. And it's going to be so tasty. So until then, I hope you guys make the spinach artichoke dip and enjoy. I'll see you, see you next week. All right, bye everyone.